Believe it or not, commercial flying cars just might become a reality in upcoming years. Cartoons and sci-fi movies have shown us advanced dystopian worlds with robots and flying cars for years now. And everybody has secretly wanted to own a flying car and avoid traffic on the streets altogether. A Dutch aircraft manufacturer might just make your flying car dreams come true soon. They have launched the world's first flying car production model and it looks pretty great. Before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. Let's begin. Dutch air manufacturer PAL-V has finally come up with a flying car design that has been approved not only by the US Federal Aviation Administration, but also the European Aviation Safety Agency. Sounds pretty great, right? This car can be used to drive on roads as well, but it can convert from drive to flight mode in under 10 minutes and then you can just fly off with your car. That sounds great especially if you're stuck in traffic. All you will need to do is convert your car to drive mode and then just fly off and leave the traffic behind. It's like a dream. This car has been titled the world's first flying car production model and debuted at the Grand Geneva Motor Show in 2018. Since then, the PAL-V Liberty has been self-correcting and developing itself to become more advanced and ready for the final launch. PAL-V described their new car as the car that flies and also called it the plane that drives. They also made sure that the design meets all the standard road safety requirements. This was done so that the car could be released commercially and people all over the globe could start using it. The company has named the car Liberty, and it's really one of the most unique car models out there. It is also one of the most expensive. The first model to ever be released was the limited edition Pioneer design. It retailed for €499,000 and is still available for purchase. The Liberty Sport model is slightly cheaper than the Pioneer design. It cost approximately €299,000. There are a variety of reasons why this model is cheaper. The sports model has less personalized features and also lacks carbon fiber detailing and dual controls. People who don't mind these changes can purchase this model and save a bit of cash. This hybrid vehicle has a very interesting outer design. The model that was displayed has a bright red exterior with four wheels like a regular car. The company has promised that more colors and designs will soon be released into the market. The car is styled like a helicopter and has rotors on top that lift it when changed into fly mode. Even though the car is designed to mimic a helicopter, it's way cheaper than one. Some have even argued that the Liberty looks like a smaller but upgraded version of a helicopter. After all, helicopters can't be driven like cars on the road. Since it operates like a car, it can even be parked in a garage like other normal cars. This saves people costly parking space. The Liberty is a gyrocopter, which means that the rotors on top are the reason why the vehicle flies in the first place. Not just this, these rotors are powered by another engine that is separate from the main engine. Interesting, isn't it? A separate propeller engine situated at the back of the car provides a thrust so that the car is able to hover like a helicopter but this also means that the car will not be able to take off or land vertically. It needs to be on a runway that's at least 590 feet long for takeoff and 100 feet long for landings. This might be a little inconvenient for cities and crowded urban centers. People don't even get parking space in cities, let alone having a runway for their flying cars. The company has accepted this criticism and are working to change the model so that it needs less runway space for takeoff. This will make the car better suited for crowded cities and more people will be able to buy it. This car also has a very interesting interior. Beige-colored, comfortable leather seats are situated right in the front. The seats only have space for two people though, so you can't fly around with your whole family. Not being able to fit a lot of people is another shortcoming in Liberty's design. Since it has to fly, you have to make sure that the weight inside isn't too much or the car might not take off at all. The car also has a steering wheel and a variety of knobs and dials in front. They might look complicated, but learning how to operate them isn't so hard. In fact, a detailed instruction manual is provided to help you understand how the car works and how to fly it. Since the Liberty works on roads and in the air, the person driving it needs to have two different licenses as well. You need to have a driver's license and also be a licensed pilot to drive this car. This has also been considered a disadvantage by some people. Clearly, not everybody feels that it is convenient to get two separate licenses to drive one car. 
but others feel that owning a flying car is worth the trouble. You'll also be surprised to know that the Liberty can go up to 100 miles an hour, and in flight mode it can go up to 112 miles an hour. If you compare this to the average helicopter, you'll get a better idea of how fast this car is. The average helicopter can go up to 160 miles an hour. This car serves a dual purpose and can almost match the speed of a helicopter, that's pretty impressive. Another great thing about Palvi's Liberty is that it's quite safe. If you're skeptical about operating a flying car, you don't have to worry at all. There won't be any crash landings or engine failures coming your way. The car has an impact-resistant and very sturdy exterior to protect the people inside in case of any harsh or abrupt landing. Another benefit of owning this car is that it switches easily from flight to drive mode. So, if the weather looks questionable, you can just drive to work instead of taking a risk with flying. The switch from drive to flight mode does take a little bit of time, though. Palvi's engineers have managed to reduce this time to approximately 10 minutes, but they are working on reducing the switch time even further so that it becomes more convenient for consumers. Even though the car requires space of around 90 to 200 meters for takeoff, the airliner can take off easily from either concrete or grass airstrips. This means you don't have to worry too much about where you're taking off from. This is obviously a relief, especially if you live in the city. And another great thing about Liberty's dual-engine propulsion drivetrain is that it includes two full airplane engines by Rotex. These engines are obviously very sturdy and the chance of power failure are very low. In case one of the engines does fail, you will have another one that will take over and ensure that you land safely. You might be surprised to know that other companies are following suit and releasing their own commercial flying car designs. Bell Helicopter revealed their design for an electric, self-piloting taxi that could be used by Uber. But even though there have been other companies that have tried to come up with a variety of flying car designs, Palvi is definitely one of a kind. It has a very sturdy design and has also been approved by various authorities. Not just this, thousands of people around the world have even purchased it and Holland has even allowed its citizens to drive it under certain regulations. Palvi has been praised by consumers all over the world for complying with existing designs instead of trying to be overly ambitious and creating completely new designs for flying cars. This has helped them come up with more solid ideas, and their implementation has been more promising as well. That was a tour of the world's first commercial flying car. Would you ever purchase a flying car for yourself? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.